One of the few places on planet Earth that just about anyone can show up and become an instant millionaire. I've been living here for about a year and a half now and I wanted to share with you guys what it would look like if I tracked every single expense that I incurred for the next 30 days. Whether you're planning to show up here as a vacationer or as a digital nomad, this is going to be a really great video for you to see the reality of the costs behind Bali. So today's date is August 21st, 2019. Then we're going to be keeping tabs until September 21st. August, September. If you want to see the detailed breakdown of every single day and every expense, there will be a blog post on my website so you can see the entirety of it there. Now because I got in late last night, I wanted to share one expense that I did incur up front and that was taking a taxi from the airport here to Canggu at exactly 170,000 Indonesian rupiah. Alright guys, my favorite thing about being here in Bali has just arrived. Hello! Hello! How are you? Fine, good. Very good. This is my friend, the Gojek driver. <laughs> so it's 62,000, the equivalent of about four US dollars. I've just gotten myself two meals delivered to the house and I want to show you what they are because this one's one of my favorites. This is the chicken of your dreams. The cheesy chicken. Did you get me one? No, I got myself two because they're not big enough. Ew. I know, I'm sorry. So we all know that the biggest expense that you're going to face when coming to Bali is going to be wherever you choose to stay. I have made a full video showing my villa. If you're curious about it, I will have a link down below. But there's no denying this is not the cheapest place on the block. It has daily housekeeping, which I must say if you're coming here as a digital nomad is definitely a very nice thing so that you can stay laser sharp focus on whatever it is you're working on. And with that, it comes with an awesome yard where you can go swimming. A really awesome common space where you can do work, say hi to friends. And so one of the really great things about having roommates is that now the cost of this place has been cut basically in three. Hey Megan, are you cool to be in the video? Sweet. <laughs> she said she, she's that, done it. That's my agreement. <laughs> you did 250 a month? Our Airbnb, we had like a little studio and it was like 150 US a month, but it had no AC, no hot water. So mm. just remember that. And then food, we did a really local for like a dollar a meal. If you're gonna be renting a scooter, something that looks a little bit like this, you're probably looking at roughly 600,000 per month. Okay, so one of the best things about Bali, you can finish up work, you can make your way down to the beach, and check that out right there. Beautiful, beautiful doggies. I was gonna say sunset, but this is the best reason to come here. This is Brawa Beach, which is literally like a five minute walk away from our place. You can take an hour off from being on the computer all day and at least feel like you got to enjoy something that Bali has to offer. Phone is all set up for about 10 bucks for the month. So things are going well here. I'm getting into the digital nomad workflow. I'm starting my days extremely early, about 5 a.m. and getting to bed super early. But with that being said, I'm gonna show you a quick little trick to saving some money. Instead of paying $3 for a cappuccino every day, you can make yourself a coffee at home. A French press. Yes, mm. so easy. And that's probably gonna cost, what, 20 cents for a coffee? Maybe less. It was like 55K for the bag. Oh my gosh, that's $4 for the whole bag. <laughs> I know. See, this is why you millennials can't afford a home. It's because you're buying your coffees out. New video exported, and now it is time for the second thing on the daily checklist. Start it up. Because I'm here in Bali for a month, I've been able to sort of rationalize what's definitely a very high expense. This is a brand new gym that just opened up here and it's about 120 US dollars per month. But it's like the state of the art facility and I'm gonna be using it every day. I see it as basically the cost divided by 30 days because that is how much I plan to come this month. That's what we gotta tell ourselves at least. Yeah, I should have dried my hair before we left. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we paid for. We're having a little crew reunion here. Start off the morning with a cappuccino. That was about $3 US, and it's one of my favorites. Almond milk, so delicious. Almost as good as your coffee this morning. This is so much better. <laughs> yeah. Where are we going for breakfast, Cam? Canteen. Is that where we're going? Yeah, I'm done. All right, I'm really hungry. Can we go? Lit. There's nothing worse than the Bali drivers. They are just so ruthless here. One just cut me off in traffic. 
Good morning, let's freaking do this. Today's our day. Today is our day. Bali in the north in the center is typically really cloudy and you never quite know what you're gonna get but today the two-hour motorbike trip was so worth it we're getting perfect conditions what I love right now is that you got the yellow then you got a bit of the blue and the greens the rice terraces are right there and then like a bit of a pink hue on the mountain some of you might be curious like what I'm doing here exactly so first of all I'm gonna catch uh, an Instagram photo here Jack helped me out with that this morning Second thing is I'm shooting some hero content, basically riding the bike, uh, using a DSLR, taking photos in these beautiful environments. And that content's gonna be used to basically promote and sell my content creator course, which I'm working on as we speak. As I've mentioned, Bali is an awesome place for digital nomads, but my business in particular is all revolving around photography, videography, and I love that within two hours, I could be shooting this from my villa. But today's video is all about expenses, and the only real expense so far has been a tank of gas, which has basically been about a week or two's worth of use of the bike and that was about six bucks so costs are very low now we're gonna get some breakfast probably in a couple of hours at one of my favorite spots I'll show you that in a sec another hour and a half on the bike so it's probably three and a half hours in total this morning my butt is so sore but it's all worth it because we are here at Full Circle and it's in Ubud so it's not somewhere I come very often because it's all the way up here but everybody is it worth it was it worth the trip oh my god it's so good. So delicious. And this right here is 80,000 for this breakfast and then my coffee is probably about 40. It's about eight US dollars for everything. So it's a little bit expensive, but it's definitely a very special place. Good morning, guys. This is some fresh Bali coffee. We just started our day nice and early, made it here to the top of a waterfall. We're going to Nung Nung today to do a little bit of shooting. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, another uh, item on the Balinese food tour here. So this is like a rice patty with inside uh, brown sugar and I think she said a bit of cocoa. Oh, there we go, it's coconut. So good, wow. We're branching out. Boom. <laughs> Experiencing Balinese food. I love it. Yeah. Very good. Did Hello. you make it? So I was just telling Cam that I've got some fond memories of this waterfall. Katzi and I were here probably about a year ago. I had a bit of a stomach problem and uh, let's just say I had a call to action that couldn't wait. So I took off my shoes, climbed up the mountain a little bit to have some privacy and uh, definitely got uh, some good memories out of this place. So it's nice to be back here. Cam said today it might be him. His stomach's not feeling the best. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I'm walking a little funny. <laughs> Guys, that is the difference that just one hour makes. There's probably no less than 30, 40 people here now. And uh, to think we had this all to ourselves for close to 45 minutes to an hour this morning. Ew. Capturing all. Back from the gym and guys, I just want to say like, I have to share how I'm feeling right now because Bali is a place that some people come to party, some people come to explore, but for me, Bali is a combination of social life, it's a combination of like self-development. I absolutely love this place and right now I'm in the most insane workout routine. I've been going like 19 of the last 20 days. I'm actually seeing the difference, I'm feeling the energy boost, I feel like in such a good mood. Going to the gym just kind of sets my tone for the day and it sets everything else in its place. My entire schedule just feels so perfectly balanced right now. Hey. Hey, can I use your pool? Oh, no. All right, so I'm taking a brief hold on the 30 days of Bali expenses because I've just arrived here at the airport to fly to the Philippines for a quick little trip. 
That trip looks a little bit something like this. Here. That would hurt. Now with that said, this is the money to get to the airport. A Gojek here using the app was about 140. With a tip, it's about 160. By no means is tipping part of the culture here, so it's just something you can choose to do or not to do. Look who's home! Yay! My little biker chica. We've packed up bag number one, number two, and now we've got about an hour and 20 minutes to get up to a place by the name of Sidaman. It's on the east coast of Bali and very few people know about it. It's one of my favorite hidden gems. That is how you load up a motorbike. Let's go. We have just arrived here at a brand new place that we're gonna try out for a couple nights. We got invited to uh, come visit a hotel by the name of Salmon Vaya here in Sidaman. Yeah. <laughs> From Changu area, it's about an hour and a half on the motorbike and that's going pretty quick to get here. Katya and I have kind of fallen in love with this little hidden spot here in Bali. Beautiful, beautiful untouched rice paddies. You see people working in the traditional way, balancing like those heavy baskets on their heads. You see kids wearing the Balinese traditional clothing and you just feel like you're ultimately experiencing the real Bali. So most people in Sidamin are working agriculture. They're working yes, the fields? Right. A few of the rooms have this very unique style that you'll see right there with the tall ceilings and they're covered in uh, what's kind of like dried out grass. And that's called a lumbung and it was actually traditionally used by Balinese people to store the rice and they've turned it into a very beautiful place to have a staycation here in Bali. So we have a two bedroom place here. Yeah, so cool, the use of the local materials. Wow, check out this view. This is the top floor. So Kathy and I have this thing going where we've been ranking some of our best naps. I think for me, my number one nap will have to be in the Amazon, Amazon. when it was the Amazon. 100%. It was the rain. pouring rain, you Actually, could hear the monkeys. Too. This might just fit in the top five though. Yeah, I'm gonna put that one in the top 10 naps I've had. The breeze rolling in is perfect, no AC needed. The weather is perfect. My poor girlfriend is so tired, she's a bit borderline delusional right now. She was speaking to me in her sleep, and she was speaking to me in Spanish. So weird, she kept calling me Carlos. <laughs> my name's not Carlos, my name's Christian. <laughs> this is delicious. And somebody's barely alive. <laughs> zombie. You're a zombie mode right yeah. now. So today, it's kind of hard to take me seriously looking like this, but we're doing a 90 minute Balinese style massage. Let's do this. We basically just finished with the sunlight here. The sky is amazing out there. Check this out. Goodbye. Wow, we just got back. This is where we're having dinner. If we get some straps, or we use this to strap me to the chair. You can I might awake. not fall asleep. <laughs> so here is the first appy. Yeah, shrimp and bread with a bit of shirao and sparkling water, of course. So as you can probably see, you know, Bali has its cheap experiences and then it has its luxury experiences. And typically you get what you pay for it. Tonight's meal, I'm not exactly sure how much it is in total to stay here for a night around this price. I've just arrived here. It's only been a few hours that we've been at the resort, but this is how I like to travel with expensive experiences. I like to stay at the boutique places that are home run, run by families, run with so much care and attention. The food is so good. So after an amazing breakfast, we have met up here with Manku Mastra. Did I say that right? <laughs> and what, what does it Mastra. mean? Manku Mastra. Manku, it's men, holy men. Holy man. Yeah. And you're teaching us yoga this morning. Yeah, by Yoga and meditation. Special meditation. yoga. Ah, special yoga. Yeah. Listen on your chakra. Many people connection with you. I see. Christ, your hand. Tonight's dinner is a romantic one. They have set us up this beautiful, beautiful arrangement with flowers on the ground, petals everywhere. The best thing is... Christian's favorite song. It's raining. Rain. I love the sound of rain. Makes it more romantic too. Yeah. Mm. We just finished up dinner and we walked like a block away because coincidentally it's right next to where Katy and I got our rings made. You guys remember this is Agung at Agung Silver. 
And one of the most amazing things is we just heard from him that he's getting almost two to three of you guys coming in every single day, usually in couples, to get rings made. That is one of my favorite things about YouTube is being able to find these awesome local experiences. And if you're looking for one, Agung, he's the man. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to get back to the room, call it a night, and then head back to Chengdu. By the way, I've really loved my stay here. This is such a cool resort. All right, a full month has passed and a little bit. Do I look older? Having gone to the gym just about every single day, been focusing on eating relatively healthy with the occasional little luxury. Now, as you'll see, I have done an entire spreadsheet over the last 30 days. If you wanna see it in depth, it'll be on my blog, on my website. But for those of you that just want the quick and easy talking points, let me give you a breakdown of how much I spent in total and how much I spent on average by the day. One thing I will say is that I do have an accounting background and with that, I definitely know how to run a decent little spreadsheet. So instead of just dropping all the information in one place, I've broken down the expenses into food, into extra, into luxuries, and into rent. Now, first of all, my rent was about a thousand US dollars this month. Uh, this entire place is much more, but I have two of the rooms currently being rented out to my good friends, so that's been a great way to help keep the costs on my end much more reasonable. And if you take a thousand dollars over a month, that means I'm paying roughly 33 US dollars per day to have this beautiful place right here to film, to live. That's pretty much the best 33 dollars I'll spend in a day. The category of food is self explanatory Explanatory. Now, extra could be anything from taking a taxi, buying toothpaste, topping up electricity to keep this place powered, scooter rental. I don't personally have to do that because I own a bike, but I know that most people watching this video will probably want to rent. And I've also added the expense of a visa run. Whether you decide to stay here 30 days and extend an additional 30 days, that is a little bit of an expensive process, around 75 US dollars, but the other way to do that is to do a visa run where you do basically a round trip flight to somewhere like Kuala Lumpur, which is basically the cheapest place you could fly to on a round trip. And if you get lucky, maybe you'll find a flight, again, around 75 US dollars. So that right there has been built into the extra fees. Now the luxury fees are things that I paid because they matter to me. For me, one of those luxury expenses was protein powder. About 80 US dollars for five pounds worth, it's something that that I value and something that I want to spend my money on, but I also recognize that it's not for everyone, so I put it into that special category. Another example was the weekend retreat we spent at Samanvaya. This would be a relatively expensive getaway, especially since I'm already renting something, but it's one of those things where, you know, you're in Bali. If you want to have a special weekend with a loved one, whatever you're doing, these are the kind of amazing options you have here in Bali if you're willing to spend a little extra. And of course, I have that extremely expensive gym membership, but for me, it was worth every single penny because I literally went almost every day and because of it I feel so so good right now it was foundational to my routine I would get up at like 8 o'clock make my way to body factory by 8 30 have an amazing one hour workout with some friends and then straight to work so it really put my day in order all right guys drum roll please the total amount that I spent during the past 30 days here in Bali from visa runs to rent 35 million <gasps> and a little bit so if you take the 35 million Indonesian rupiah, that comes out to be $2,487 US. If you break that down even further into a daily basis, we're talking $82.93. Now, I know that number right there might frighten some people because you're probably thinking to yourself, I thought you came to Indonesia to have affordable living. The first thing I will say is that Indonesia is extremely affordable. Bali itself is a bit of an inflated pocket of tourism. So prices here are not nearly as cheap as they used to be and they're not as cheap as Southeast Asia in general. Okay, so I've just created a theoretical daily budget for somebody that's falling in more of the budget category to show you that Bali can be done a lot more affordably. So if we allocated, let's say 450 US per month for a budget towards rent, which will get you a single bedroom, average little run of the mill place around Changgu, I've given you what I would say an average days worth of food. We got banana oatmeal plus coffee from let's say Hungry Bird. On average that's costing about 50k in the morning. Let's say about 120k uh, for let's say a Coca-Cola, a water bottle, and your Poke Bowl. And for lunch 
lunch or dinner a chicken wrap. That's gonna cost you about 70K and there's many places you can get it for that price. Scooter rental is gonna be 20K a day. Visa run, I've just kind of taken it and prorated it over a month, so it's gonna be about 30,000 per day. And then extras from gas, laundry, toothpaste, whatever you can think of, that's gonna be about 17K a day. So if we take these all up, let's go and do 525,000 Indonesian rupiah per day. Now we've brought down our daily cost to a much more budget friendly price of 37 US dollars per day. We're talking $1,117 US per 30 days per month here in Bali. Like I said guys, if you wanna have a closer look at how I broke down all of my spreadsheet, it will be available to you on my blog post about how much it costs to live in Bali. This last part is directed at you. If you've ever dreamed of being a digital nomad or you currently already are, there is one main reason that I recommend Bali above all other places. That is the fact that I can just stay focused on my work all the time all day. When I wake up in the morning, I don't do my laundry, I don't even make my bed, I don't even clean the dishes. Now it sounds unbelievably entitled and privileged to say that, but the truth is, it's just more time that you can focus in on what you do best. I don't know what it is that you do best, but for me, it's video editing. It's managing a team and building my business. This lifestyle is not for everyone, but for those of you that are starting to see where this all makes sense, that is why I love Bali, and that's where I'm gonna end today's video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please leave the video a big thumbs up. It's actually a big part of the algorithm, or so I've heard. So if you wanna help this video be shared and reach other people, please leave the video a big like. It makes a huge difference. And one last little plug, guys. If you're coming to Bali, I do have a full Bali travel guide everything that I know about the destination, my favorite coffee shops, my favorite restaurants, the best viewpoints in the north, in the islands, it's all in that guide. So check out that link down below and let's get lost again in the next one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>